Hello, everybody. It is uh, the October 2018 edition of the Bizarre Briefing. I am Bryce Castillo. Joined, as always, with Brant Hughes. Hey, that's me. This week, we've got Jeff Schusler. Hey. Uh, David Rowan is off doing errands. We'll talk a little bit. We'll, we'll hint a little bit at what uh, he's doing a little later on in the show. Uh, but this is the behind-the-scenes podcast of all the things that go on here at Bizarre Magic. That includes Scam School, includes Modern Rogue, Scam Stuff, the website, all of the podcasts, like Night Attack and Court Killers. So... Uh, welcome everybody happy happy october <laughs> whoa <laughs> uh, we're recording this uh a, a week late and on election day yeah mm-hmm. and and an hour late we uh, we had a lot of stuff come up but but we have a lot of topics to go through so sure. let's kind of let's kind of jump right in what's that uh, yep <laughs> okay great uh so uh, like i said uh, halloween was just last week uh-huh. and we did a lot of modern rogues. We did o- over the month. Did we do six? Is that right? Uh, yes. I'm gonna look six at six in uh, October. Six oh. in in October, and and four of them were Halloween. Four or five were Halloween related. So we've got uh here. I'm, I'm looking at Three YouTube. Three were uh, psychic surgery, uh, which was the last one that came out on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Uh, comparing real blood, real pig's blood to fake blood recipes. Right. Uh, and using chocolate as the best fake blood in black and white. And then the other three mm-hmm. were cooking an egg with a light bulb, how to buy an election, and champion sword cutting techniques. Feels like a Forever year ago. ago. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> how was it uh, kind of upping the output for a month, Brant? Uh, it was okay. Uh, maybe not sustainable. Yeah. Um, also because in the middle of that we were also doing a lot of shooting yeah we were shooting episodes and stuff so it was like it was a whole deal and then also ads for each of those so it's like you have to shoot the ads you have to get the ads approved approved and everything um it was a whole deal um it it was it was not too bad once we got some of the shooting out of the way because um with remix freed up for me which i'm sure we'll talk about in a bit uh it gave me a little bit more time to handle things um but uh this past week we did you know halloween day psychic surgery uh which was a wednesday a wednesday a dreaded um, the classic <laughs> dreaded wednesday yeah, deadline. the scariest day of the week <laughs> um but then we didn't do one on friday so we didn't we didn't do a, a two episode week again mostly because i was like Cause we had a shoot on that Thursday and mm-hmm. uh, the next episode that's coming out is going to be uh, a longer one. And I was like, there's a 0% chance that I'm going to get an episode done in eight hours or whatever. Right. And also we don't have an ad prepped for that Friday. So there's a lot less incentive to actually get to an get episode it. out. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was kind of fun. Uh, it wasn't uh, my, my, I, I think my rain cloud over it was that it wasn't what the guy said that they were going to do a year ago. Right. Uh, and we had planned it. We It was really planned and set up to do a seance episode hmm. for Halloween. Mm-hmm. And then I guess the, the guy who was going to come out, his day job is busy around Halloween. Um, and so it was like a last minute or it was it was. It was actually like a, a, a sort of heads up cancellation that we replaced with sort of these other Halloween adjacent episodes. Yeah, we with the seance, we wanted to get uh, a professional in. Right. Um, and to talk about like why they're bullcrap. And yeah. Yeah. And and Brian was like, I know just the guy. <laughs> um, and, you know, of course, he that's like that's his wheelhouse is to know people who know about that stuff. Right. Uh, and then some time went by and jason was like so when's that guy coming in and then brian's like i thought you talked to him (laughs) uh and then so at the start of october brian was like okay okay i'll send him an email right now (laughs) and then and then the dude was like yeah sure and then he went well Well, actually no no actually not gonna happen yeah so we had to kind of pivot and figure out some other solution right and it, it it ended up being that we did so many videos because i guess i i i don't exactly know how the ad situation works out for modern rogue as a show 
but my understanding is we have a couple of people selling ads mm -hmm. and we ended up with six ads sold for that month right instead of the usual four or five just one per week mm -hmm. uh, which facilitated doing as many episodes yeah um, but you, like how did you feel overall about the Halloween season because normally you would do like a Halloween ad or Halloween themed ads or right like you, Halloween is Brant's that's that's, that's my jam the season yeah. of brand uh-huh the branding hour it's it's the it's the only holiday that matters and you can <laughs> quote me on that <laughs> um yeah it was you know usually usually i do have like the scam school halloween ads which are a lot of fun because they're they're these like fun diversions from from the norm yeah. um and these were slightly less uh creatively narratively driven mm -hmm. but they did kind of scratch that itch a little bit okay um you know we did we did do more kind of narrative stuff with these modern rogue episodes than we usually do mm -hmm. uh yeah the, the psychic surgery had uh, a multi-minute long sketch basically yeah or it, a, a scripted well not even scripted but just narrative moment yeah it was it was kind of well, the psychic surgery one was weird because the 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 so we did we did two skits. We we did psychic surgery and we did chocolate blood and chocolate blood was kind okay. of a uh kind of like a oh, well let's come up with a fun idea for a black and white short basically that shows off chocolate syrup as blood as a concept. Right. Um and you know, I kind of came up with an idea for that and then we kind of fleshed it out over time. But it, I, I guess that was actually very similar to psychic surgery in that Brian and Jason are kind of incapable of planning ahead um, <laughs> and they wouldn't know what to do with the script if you gave them one. Sure. Um, so it was like, okay, how do I set this up so that they can improv dialogue and then I can try to cut it down and sculpt it into a coherent narrative? Mm -hmm. Um, cause we did take multiple takes, but they definitely don't give consistent performances. So yeah. was there a lot of cutting between takes? Yeah. With, with the chocolate syrup one, we did, I want to say like three or four run throughs of the primary dialogue stuff. Yeah. And yeah, it's very mix and matched just based off of what I thought was entertaining. Mm -hmm. hmm. But you know, I, I think, I think it helps that we sort of had, rough ideas of what the beats were supposed to be um so kind of like kind of like, like i think monsters was shot like that where they they did it and if you haven't seen monsters it's a little indie film where the, mm. they basically went out to mexico after like a natural disaster happened or something and then uh, they basically kind of improv their way through uh this story they didn't really have a script but they're they, they had ideas for okay at the end of your scene your character needs to hit this point this with these characters yeah um so they would kind of feel their way through hmm. to to get there hmm. wow um and so this was kind of a similar thing of like okay you, you need, just gotta hit these beats yeah you need to convey this emotion you need to do this kind of thing mm -hmm. just get there somehow yeah um and and that's not uncommon for comedy, right? Like the state and Reno nine one one were very much like that mm -hmm. in terms of just being like, like you know this this sketch doesn't even tie into the overall plot. This one kind of does. You need to do something by the end of it, but you get a lot of leeway. Um, yeah. It was interesting to shoot that. I'm glad that they both came out well. Does it make you want to do more narrative stuff with Modern Rogue? Uh, I mean, I've I've always had that kind of drive. I mean, we we sort of did that with the original uh, hidden surveillance devices episode, mm -hmm. where there was like a lot of drone stuff, and we had this whole setup, and then oh, right. there was the whole end with Science Man and and uh, 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 Grand Pants Murphy Esquire, uh, <laughs> who was an unnamed <laughs> character at the time. Uh -huh. um, What's yeah. his organization? Uh, TMZ Cobra. TMZ okay. Cobra. Not to be <laughs> confused with Cheeto TMZ. Okay. No. And, uh, and well, yeah. Also, last year's Halloween had kind of the ghost hunters, right? Yeah, last year's Halloween was like uh, 
not necessarily narrative driven, but more of just like uh, more just like a, a parody send off that was that was very, uh, very very goofy. Yeah, uh, and and that was, that was that was definitely a departure as far as format is is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I like doing that stuff when the subject matter is, lends itself to that. Okay. Uh, which isn't always the case, you know, if Brian and Jason are going to sit down at a table and talk about some con guy from 50 years ago. Yeah. Like that maybe doesn't necessarily. It's not make, exciting. It, for, yeah. it, it doesn't make sense to do like some whole elaborate thing. Right. Um, but some episodes do, and that's a fun thing to do. Very cool. Okay. What do you, uh, do you. What would you want to do next year? Not to make a promise, because thankfully no one made a promise of what we'll do this year. Right. Uh, we kind of well, didn't even address the same. Did you, you, say? you say that, but I think I've seen in the comments that Brian was like, well, next year, definitely doing the seance. Okay, well, <laughs> so <laughs> doubling down on a promise is even less trustworthy of a promise. So I think yeah. that's definitely not going to happen next year. Um, and it's not like we're talking about the Scooby-Doo episode that they promised as well. Or a Scooby Doo episode? I don't remember that yeah. at all. Yeah, they were like, "Oh, we should definitely do like a Scooby Doo episode where we do like the whole thing." And also, like the promise of like doing the the playing card shotgun thing at the end of the uh, like prison inventions episode. Oh, the pipe bomb. Yeah. Thank God, they're not gonna make a pipe bomb. No, <laughs> no. And, but every now and then, people in the comments are like. What are you gonna hey, do? What happened to that? <laughs> and it's like, dude, we're not it's doing not. that. We're not gonna make a bomb instructional video. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Well. Um, but next year, that's a great question. Um, I don't have like a really good idea. Otherwise, I probably would have pushed for it harder this year. Do you have like a ballpark, like something spiritual, something natural, something supernatural, something on location, off location? No any idea. sense. No just, sense. Just just any, anywhere anywhere the wind takes me. Although I did have a fun idea uh, this year that we didn't do, which was making a raft out of pumpkins. I think that would just be like a fun little thing. It's not even like that sounds like a fun anything. dumb idea though. Yeah, yeah. And it's like totally viable. I, I just want to see how they would attach pumpkins to each other. Um, <laughs> it, it it's it seems like something that would be a, a pretty easy thing to do once once the pond gets filled up at some point oh, right. in the next ten years or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, but that would that would be a fun goofy thing. Yeah, that just reminds me that we we were going to shoot an episode like a month or two ago that got put off, and I don't think we're ever going to do it. Hmm. Uh, the one that required a pool. Uh, and was kind of dangerous oh yeah like we breezed over that so grace so easily that i don't <laughs> think we ever are going to do it yeah i mean that one uh, i don't want to spend a lot of time talking about something that we might do uh uh and, and tease everyone but but there is there is an episode that we've been putting off for a couple months that i'm gonna make sure we do and it deals with art Oh, okay. Yeah, you need to push That's, the person who has to do something to do. No, that. I I've yeah. talked to him about it, and like I have a plan. Okay, so it's we're gonna shoot that this month, next month, this oh, okay. month. Okay, because it sounded like something intricate needed to be built to do it. Oh, I got it. Okay, you got it. I got. We're gonna do. It's gonna be a cool episode. It's gonna be like it's gonna be about art, and it's gonna be a little. Not unconventional, but like a fun little build. Yeah. Cool. It'll be good. Very nice. Uh, speaking of builds, uh, over the past two, three weeks, we had some more guests out to shoot Modern Rogue videos. Mm-hmm. So just this past weekend, we had uh, uh, one Shannon Morse from Hack5 and Threatwire. Uh, she was in town uh, mm-hmm. to record some episodes about uh, internet stuff, technology, like uh, not some hacking stuff but also just some like internet tips yeah right those are pretty good those we finally the the best thing to come i mean the episodes will be good but the best thing to come out of that weekend was that now we have chairs and a table yeah property <laughs> jason went out spent 60 bucks got some got some little fold out you got like a little poker table and, set yeah. yeah you can really tell that that table was a part of a sixty dollars set uh-huh. because of how incredibly light it is. Yeah. Um. 
Uh, but I it's was... better than sitting on the beds, which we've been doing for the past couple months. So. Also, also true. Also true. Yeah. But I would like I would like a table that has enough weight that you can put stuff on it and handle oh, stuff on it. That's on the dock. We're yeah. we're gonna talk about tables. I feel like uh, the modern rogue is going to get really weird at some point when you realize the only way to get things in the house is by having episodes that require <laughs> things that's going to be like uh-huh. the modern rogue gets a dining room table <laughs> or yeah. like builds a table <laughs> or I mean, well, ten, don't, don't ten, get ahead of us though. B- yeah. buys toilet paper <laughs> i was about to say like 10 cool hacks with toilet paper and then yes. we just buy it in bulk and then now we have toilet paper there. okay yeah you know what i would love is water i would love it if we had water again that, <laughs> that'd be nice i yeah. they always drink beer or diet sodas uh, but we shoot uh, oftentimes we shoot in the mornings or close enough to the mornings or close enough to breakfast for me where it's like i would like to drink no beer water no i already don't drink much 5 p.m beer. somewhere <laughs> all right so uh but anyway shannon morris shannon morris uh we did three episodes with her is that right three episodes and a guest interview for patrons that's right uh all of those went went very well i think we had planned to do five um but we did uh we had a demo fail on one and then, and the other one just got pushed off. Oh right, oh, the, yeah. There was like of location stuff, location issues with the other one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, but those are pretty nice. And so, uh, the at least the first one of those should be out relative kind uh, sometime soon. Uh, we've shot a lot of stuff lately, so we have like twelve episodes in the bank or something. Goodness. And I'm I'm starting to be like, you know, we have that like ready set drone stuff that it's like well, whenever we get somebody on the show, I feel like they're going like. Okay, so my episode's coming out real soon, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, well, hold on. And then so now I'm starting to feel the pressure of like, guess who we've already recorded episodes with that I need to like start slotting it in right. earlier. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I expect an episode from Shannon will come out in the next month, probably. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, and then we also, two weeks ago, shot... Um, how many episodes did we shoot with, the, with these folks? Two or three? Uh, we did three, three with uh, Evan and Caitlin, who are mm-hmm. uh, uh, also a you do our YouTuber uh, maker couple. Uh, I I had not I had actually not seen their videos uh, before, but Jason got in touch with them because they live in Dallas or they, li- they live in San Antonio. They live in San Antonio. None of the two that I said, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but also a big city in Texas. Yeah, whatever. Close so enough. categorically closer than the other two options that I made. Uh-huh. Um, but but those are great. We did um, an, uh, improvements to the potato cannon or rather they built a potato launcher different than how the guys built a potato launcher last year. Mm-hmm. And so they showed us theirs and we tested it out. Yeah, and that one will probably go up this week. Oh yeah? Yeah. That one that's an that's a that's a good episode. There are some Halloween themes towards the end of that. Oh right. Okay, yeah. Which is why I'm pushing that Halloween one. Even though it's like a big episode. Yeah. And then um uh and uh, then making knives. Oh making and, knives, right. Uh balloon slingshots. Well, yeah. Uh improvised slingshots and both of those are fun. I think the knives one I I the 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 making knives is probably longer than it needs to because they handmade for knives. Mm-hmm. They are each person handmade their own knife with the tools that they brought um which just meant it took a really long time to shoot. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of trimming that down. I remember I remember I specifically remember you and I talking right before that shoot of like, "Well, how many knives are they going to make?" Because the amount of knives that they make will directly impact how long it takes to shoot this like mm-hmm. metal knives yeah these yeah. thin little metal knives yeah oh, okay so not like what's that show like forged in fire or yeah no not, no not huge forged they didn't they didn't bend shape. the tang no oh, okay all right no it's it's all sharpening uh, you know these little metal sheets okay um but yeah and and i think i i remember us being like they will only make one or two because there was a very concerted effort right before shooting to be like okay we're gonna we're going to focus. We're not going to take it too long. We're just going to keep it on the straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. And then everybody ended up with their own knife. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, knives. That'll, that'll also, that's a yeah. knopper. Uh, also a guest interview with them as well. That's right. That's right. Lots of, are there, are there any other guest interviews that no. we've shot? Okay. Oh, uh, and, and haven't released yet. I mean, right. No. Okay. Uh, so uh, th- those are, those are a lot of fun. It's always nice to have a guest on. 
because especially if they are kind of leading the topic mm. because they are very knowledgeable about it and and usually people come in with a good a good sense of not not necessarily the structure for the show but the structure for how they would teach something mm-hmm. and then the guys kind of uh fit it um, yeah and uh they were they were friends with uh bill duran who's been on the show before so that's right it was, it was kind of nice to to be able to chat about bill yeah. behind his back uh dylan dylan in our, our live chat room asks does everyone with knife include you the crew no we uh no. did not uh do that that would have been no. two more knives <laughs> yeah or was that three was that no the drones guy was when we had um wyatt out helping us mm. i was thinking right that. uh so we were speaking about tables earlier also good callback to stokiyama did stokiyama did yeah okay oh yeah because stokiometry Sto- yeah. stoichiometry there is no stoichiometry there is only sto- stoichiyama do or stoichiyama do not do not oh good god yeah very very awful so you're talking about tables earlier because we have um if you've seen the walkthrough of the pro- of the building on the on the headquarters space there's a large main room that we are calling the studio i guess and we are uh inching closer to having that room soundproofed or to having yeah we got soundproofing panels in, in. right they were purchased and are now on location they're on site but we are waiting for our contact because we wanted they want to do an episode about soundproofing well also we're also waiting for electrician stuff because they have to tear down one of the walls in right. the studio to deal with things so brian needed like a plan and an uh, of like what we're gonna do with the space so that way he can get the the builder to come in and do stuff right. and, and i think they were over there today i think oh. that's that's uh, someone was over there today with brian measuring stuff so i'm gonna assume that that was the builder's to do the electricity but then yes we've also got a contact who we might do a video with about you know soundproofing yeah uh, yeah i don't or sound treating sound treating right I um i don't i don't exactly know what that looks like in terms of like is that a modern rogue episode or is that just a video about the studio i see that just being like one of uh hopefully multiple uh like bonus videos of like here's like what's going on at the hq Mm. um and just kind of like building out a a little bit more room on the channel for stuff like that that's not necessarily an episode right so to speak yeah uh still and asks like a uh, sound treatment for recording or making it so noise doesn't travel out of the room so it'll be for recording in that space because it's very echoey there's nothing in there it's yeah. just a big it's open hardwood all, floor yeah hard surfaces everywhere yeah in so space it, it echoes and i think we shot one ad in there um my guess is that was probably not the greatest thing to edit it was a bomb fell or maybe a couple of ads we, we've done a couple of ads and a couple of skim score remix intros oh um, right but it's but, just not an it's it's just not good to, sh- to record stuff in yeah i mean it's bad enough that when we're in the kitchen corridor area mm-hmm. i can hear their voices echoing in the main room from out there yeah so so uh so in any case once that that studio will get set up and sound treated and and all sorts of stuff uh, but that will be where the sets for the various shows and podcasts will be mm-hmm. and uh, one thing, and I know that you mentioned this in Modern Rogue Discord, was you want to get a nice table for the Modern Rogue uh, area. Yeah, I would love to because we do so many episodes that are just kind of based around that table. building stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's just kind of like part of the part of the set dressing. Um, and for the longest time, we've had these like really shallow tables that are like cheap sort of stand-up tables that uh brian bought a couple of yeah they're like lowe's brand like build build them yourself work tables Hmm. yeah and you know they they get the job done well enough um uh in a pinch but i would love Hmm. it for if we're gonna have like a little bit more of a permanent home i would love it if we could build a really cool table 
mm -hmm. um, just so whatever specifications we need. Um, so, yeah. I mean, something that, you know, doesn't have a lip on it, like the one that we have now has. Right. Uh, something where there's a vice built into it and attached to it, probably. That would be nice. Uh, the yeah. height of those tables is okay, as far as, like, yeah. standing and building on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I've got a, 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 Maybe list, something lighter. a list of features, oh, okay. uh, which might be nice. Sure. Um, some of these are a little bit... So, in my mind, I'm imagining... We build this and we make a video out of building it similar to how we would make a video about sound treating that room. Okay. Or something. Sure. Um, so kind of like a really casual kind of video. Um, uh, but also, if uh, in my mind, we build it ourselves, but I don't think any of us are really qualified to do that. No. So a lot of... Or these... at least not like a nice table. Right. I think... A lot of these feature <laughs> suggestions are very optimistic, yeah, um, and and not all of them are necessary. But uh, just just getting the getting the ideas flowing. Okay, sure. So um, it, it would be nice if if there were wheels on the table that you could lock down. Okay, sure. Right, so that way you can move like it. Casters, yeah. Yeah, you can move it easily if you need to. Keep it locked down if you want it to stay still. That'd be nice, at least if it's heavy. Like, I think when right. it's light, it's maybe not a big issue. Mm -hmm. But if it's heavy, because, like, those work tables that we have are kind of heavy because they're solid wood. And they're also just, like, awkward to move because of their shape and size. Right. They don't, um, like, have good hand handles. Yeah. Like, you can, you can move them by yourself if you really wanted to. It, it's this is not. They're too big for that. Yeah. They're just a little too big for that. Sure. And so, like, if you had, like, wheels or something on it, you can just, you can just push it into place real nice and easy. Okay. Um, wheels. Yeah, having having a spot in in maybe in the middle, um, that would be like a really hard surface instead of the standard wood that's around it. So some mm -hmm. kind of like thick thick plank of uh, of of steel or something. Okay. Um. So that way, you know, they're always they're always hitting stuff. Yes. Um. And wood is like super absorbent for for the energy dispersal in that kind of interaction uh -huh. so it's like if you're gonna hit something then the the real way you would handle that right now is you would take an anvil that they have and you would you know lift it up onto the table and then hit something on the anvil but mm -hmm. it doesn't like look great and it takes time and it's it's just kind of a hassle if it was built into the table and you're just like oh if we got to hit something hit let's it right hit there. it on the hard surface yeah what if there's like a trap door that opened and then you could turn a wheel and an anvil came up out of the middle of the table I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> Look, there are no bad ideas. Right. Just things that we won't do. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. That sounds even further out of my <laughs> capabilities of implementing. Okay. Okay. But it does sound fun and theatrical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, do, 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 do. if maybe there was like maybe like, like a little fog machine in there that yeah. automatically activates once yeah. you do it, so yeah. that way it's like and some pfft. lights embedded. So that yeah, it just, all yeah. right. Lasers. Deploy the anvil. Probably not gonna happen. Oh. <laughs> but good. That's the right Correct. headspace. Yeah. All right. okay. yeah. Yeah. So a, 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 a smash zone. Yeah. A smash sm TV zone. A smash zone. Uh huh. <laughs> TM. Okay. Well. S smashing only. Um. Sakura, Sakura Gucci's not gonna like that. The Smash guy. Okay. Smash Bros. Um, having an integrated outlet would be nice. Okay. Because they're plugging in stuff sometimes, not all the time, mm -hmm. but, you know, kind of have it off to the side or something in case they, they're, like, soldering something yeah. or they're... Something on, maybe on on the panel on the side that they see so that they can put it there, but it's not, like, a big plug oh, coming out of the... Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that, I'm sure there are ways to do that. Yes. I, yeah, there's got to be. I've seen tables that have had outlets in them before. Right. So it, I know it's not impossible. I mean, at the very least, you could just take. <laughs> None of us really know how electricity works, Sorry. but I know it's possible. People have done. Yes. I mean, you could at the very least put an outlet and attach it to the front Wor side of worst a table. Worst case scenario, what we could do is we could take one of those extension cables Oh, and in the leg, we could have one of those things where it's like... A little wind-up, a little spindle? Yeah, where it's like spring-loaded, so you could kind of like... Zoop, okay. Zoop, 
and then you uh, and you plug it, it in and you plug it into the wall or something and then it's just like got a thing right here okay. and then you just plug it yeah you know that, uh, th- sure. that's that's like that's like the the kind of like that actually that that it's not lasers in a in a in a revol- a, a rising platform mm-hmm. but okay but that's like that's a basic form of that Ideally, it would be nice <laughs> to just have like a thing built into the table where it's sure. like, here's four outlets or something, and you just plug it in, and it's and it works. And it works. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, outlets. Outlets. Um, so uh, maybe on the tabletop, have some kind of like integrated measurements. So like a grid system. So maybe maybe grids. Um, maybe like uh, maybe like angles. Okay. On it, so that way you can kind of just line something up and go. This is a forty-five degree angle. If they're just gonna like cut something or whatever. Okay. Sure. That's that's a ba- an easy design choice. Yeah. Just draw it on with Sharpie. Like well, okay. whatever you <laughs> whatever I, you gotta do to make you know, it. Work. I normally think of you as very detail oriented, so that's <laughs> maybe a little surprising. <laughs> but okay. I'm just saying that that seems like an easy one to implement at its worst form. Sure. I mean that's just spray paint. That's just a spray paint job. That that's easy. Yeah. Okay. Um but I'm I'm sure there are many ways to implement a thing like that. Okay. Um Okay, we got uh got a few more here. Oh. Underneath have some hooks for safety gear. Okay. Uh, you so know, goggles. Or... Yeah, because I imagine behind them there's maybe like a pegboard, and that's where they keep like the tools and everything. Okay. Um, but for just like they 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 need <laughs> they, they need safety gear a lot, and yeah. just like have it right in front of them, right under the table, and a lot of that safety gear is like kind of it would be kind of weird to put on a pegboard because I mean they're all like hanging stuff like like the goggles. I mean you could put it on a pegboard, but uh-huh. if I if, mean they do it now or they did it in the warehouse. Yeah. So well, there wasn't a pegboard though. Yeah, that was just uh, a metal grate. <laughs> And it, it's so just have have a place for that kind of stuff. Okay, it would be kind of storage nice. some storage space, storage hooks. Sure. Yeah. Um, this one, this is one of the more optimistic ones, I think, um, okay. and, and less necessary. But if we're if we're talking like ideal adjustable height, okay, not um, uh, not not crazy maybe maybe a luxury but okay yeah because i mean sometimes they do sit down episodes where they're just talking about something sometimes they do stand up episodes where they're building something uh it'd be nice to have a table that could accommodate both okay um yeah and currently we do have an adjustable height table but it's like an l shape and it's weird and i don't think it's like good for video right um but if we're building this table uh, somebody in the Discord uh, had like this really great video of this dude who made a table that has adjustable height, um, mm-hmm. and that has like a car jack in it or something, or like Whoa. a motorcycle jack or something, and it's like two two jacks stacked this? up on each other. No, it's the, the other the, video. The video on that same post. Okay. Yeah, and it's like, oh, it's such a cool table. Whoa, it, that's and, that's crazy. This is like. Oh, he yeah. was using a drill, so he uses like a uh, like a like a socket. Yeah. To actually adjust. Uh, wow. I, I think I think later in that video, there's a there's like kind of a diagram of how it works. Also, it's got like a built-in vice, which is really neat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, okay. Well, this is that's that's is a excessive. little bit. <laughs> that's a little bit out of our purview, but it's really cool. Uh, also, <laughs> Jackpot. Also, that that bench has like the wheels at the bottom, and it locks down, and it's uh-huh. like you can see him early on in the video, like just putting his full weight into the table, and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's a cool table. Okay. Anyway, a bench brand bench. Uh, adjustable. Oh, but you have to make it yourself. Yeah, it's DIY. Uh, forty, bo- 40 so bucks you, for you the spend plans. Forty bucks for the plans. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, free shipping though. So adjustable high would be nice. Okay. Um, adjustable height maybe some kind of like protective varnish on it because you know they're always they're always like putting weird stuff on the table and making a mess just something just something to keep it nice could be nice okay yeah that's that sounds nice there are plenty of treating treating chemicals out there solvents and stuff yeah okay um oh uh, a system of like uh meticulously labeled drawers for like little parts and components okay so like if they need like 
screws or if they need, you know, these little washers, basically just like the Home Depot section where it's like all the little pieces. Uh, 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 just like do that, but in a table. We should just see if we can get one of those units. Yeah. That like that they have at Home Depot. You mean just, just like a, a box with a bunch drawer? of drawers in it? Yeah. You can get one of those. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Would be cool. I'm sh- I'm sure there are things that they could make use of if you're like, oh, here's a, like here's a here's a section for all of your tape. Yeah. And it's like, hey, maybe you'll use tape this time. <laughs> well, especially because I don't know that they've done too many proper. I wouldn't say that they've done many proper builds at the new headquarter space, mm-hmm. but at the warehouse space, they have the benefit of the warehouse being a warehouse for supplies and materials. Yeah. But also with the warehouse, there's a lot of like, okay, I know that six months ago I brought in here <laughs> these five supplies and I think David moved it somewhere because they actually run a business here <laughs> and I don't know where it's at. So maybe talk to David. It's like, yeah, just have a drawer, put it in the drawer. You get Okay. Yeah. Very good. Any more ideas? Uh, just a couple Oof. integrated vice, uh, which we mentioned Talked earlier, about. would be nice. Um, make it maybe kind of like a little bit, a little bit modular, just in that, you know, like if you needed to to take off the tabletop or something to like get if if we had you know some kind of integrated outlet, maybe have like access to that whole mechanism mm-hmm. or just like to more easily repair it if something breaks or whatever okay um i don't really know how that would work but you know yeah uh and then uh, the last one that I, I came up with was just um just like to have four legs uh-huh. <laughs> um just a little bit of minimal under lighting okay um oh that's easy yeah you can get that at ikea I, I have that i bought a bunch that i don't use yeah, and just so that way, I'm thinking mostly of like, if there's an episode where it makes sense for us to turn out most of the lights, then there's a little bit of ambient light that's not in their eyes mm-hmm. and that kind of fills the background just a tiny bit. Yeah, um, that that might be a decent thing to have. Okay, very cool. Um, so if you have ideas, <laughs> if you know someone. Then send me plans. Send us plans. Uh, you find, uh, uh, open up uh, Google and type the word email and uh, you'll find us. Um, no, but uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll talk a little bit about sets in a bit here. But um, I'm also thinking of table needs for that space. Mm-hmm. Um, partially because like this podcast studio will eventually move over there right. um, in the next couple of months at least is this table still going to be the set for podcasts over there well i mean the whole like we may use that table for now okay yeah because i'm mostly thinking of like this is an opportunity Uh to not just use reclaimed furniture from brian's spare bedrooms so but i what i will say is like for the podcasts the table's fine because it, they, you know why the table's fine? Because it doesn't have a bunch of doodads and stuff for Brian to play with. But he knows that that sounds bad. <laughs> he knows that that sounds bad, and he knows that it, it's right at his at his junk. So he can, like I'm I'm just saying. Okay. This is this table works fine for this that purpose. In okay. terms of like looking out for the budget, this table will work fine. Um, but I think the plan for when we move the podcast stuff over. Oh my goodness! It does okay. Yes, how, okay. It is not a great table. How? Well, you, I'm more concerned about when you buy a table. Most tables don't have any doodads on them. But, <laughs> they have four legs at a top, right? Not the kind that Bryce not, looks oh, at. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> it's got like spinny bits and fidget yeah. spinners yep, on yep, it, yep. and I like a premiumtables.com. Sure. Yeah. It's just uh, a big bun that goes ooga, and then it's like, okay, cool. Now that's a table we could use. I'm All just right. Saying. We can get new. Uh, we could get a new table. That would be cool. Uh, but mostly, my thing about moving the podcast stuff is is like moving because Brian wants to reclaim this room. My understanding is that the children have expanded and are taking even more rooms, and now the guest room over there that Manifest Brian destiny right uh, the room over there behind that wall that Brian usually normally would sleep in uh, has now been taken over by a child and. Ah. 
and now he's sleeping in some sort of princess bed thing that is not <laughs> working out. Did he out, just I trade guess. rooms with one of his daughters? Is that what happened? <laughs> It's my understanding. Okay, all right, all right, all right. And so he would like to take this place and have a real size bed mm-hmm. in here. Got a lock um, on the door. And yeah. he is fascinated with having beds everywhere. He's like, <laughs> in every editor room, I want there to be five beds. And there are there are ten business chairs in this home, and it it was only last week when we got more than one stool over at the headquarters. Like there are too many business chairs in this house like there was a time when i would walk in and the front the they're like their living room space uh they like there used to be like a couch it, looks, it used to look like a living room in there mm. but at some point it was just like here's a card table and like four business chairs four office chairs so i don't i the the facility a lot of bold ideas around some here weird ideas going on <laughs> In any case, I mean, um, don't knock it till you try it. I guess. <laughs> I, I, I guess so. I mean, it is a it is a nice. You know, I got one here. It's it's nice, but would I? I wouldn't feel good watching TV in it necessarily. But what if we had a bed right there? <laughs> <laughs> I stopped. I uh, when I moved out here to Austin, I made a very distinct choice not to have a bed and a TV in the same room because I back home I would always like watch TV in bed and then like go asleep, fall asleep watching Netflix or something. And then that's just like, I don't know. That felt weird. I've never had the luxury. Oh. I'm not quite as bourgeois as oh my uh, God. Bryce is. Just can't, can't have a television in, uh, oh in my. every room. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, but yes, I've been thinking about table needs. I come from an era where if you left the TV on when you went to sleep, you would wake up to static in the middle of the night so i never got in the habit ah well you know it's fun yeah the netflix has Mm -hmm. the sleep timer and the playstation has the sleep timer what if netflix just had a static channel (laughs) if netflix went off the air after you've been idle long enough and it was just like this we conclude our broadcasting day like swap it out for instead of that like hey are you still watching (laughs) just like immediate cut to static so close you don't need to be up on that mic for that (laughs) that would be Uh, so good yeah well i don't know if so good is what i would call it it would be an option i guess somebody's got to make that at like a like Mm -hmm. an extension or something chrome extension yeah yeah plug in yeah of just static noise Mm -hmm. well well swap out the are you still watching thing with static love it okay (laughs) i'm making it okay buy it now there you go it also adds uh, five dollars test of the emergency broadcast system (laughs) yeah from time to time great okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) love it and it and it pings your phone it knows what phones are in the room Mm -hmm. Uh so it also turns on like the amber alert sound that nobody can turn off panic every day just constantly okay well we should be prepared to ignore it when the actual (laughs) panic happens right yeah Uh uh-huh all right. Well, I'm I'm also thinking of t- the the podcasting we could probably do with another table. Uh, I don't know if that drafting chair is going to make it. it. Probably will. I don't. So he'll he'll probably fight for it. Probably. He'll be That's like fine. my I I got this drafting chair from from David Copperfield. Oh no, and, <laughs> the Copperfield chair. And I I'm gonna. Use it till the day I die. Yeah, you know. Uh, um, Teller gave me this. <laughs> he blessed it. And then he wrote me this email about it. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, one last topic before we take a short break. Um, uh, it is, uh, we're in November. <laughs> we are in November, which is the Thanksgiving season. Uh, mm. And that means that Black Friday and Cyber Monday will soon be upon us. Uh, David Bless. is not here to talk about the store, the store and products and stuff, and he doesn't like teasing stuff, I don't think. But my understanding, I've seen it with, I've held it in my hands. Uh, we have a new, an, at least one new product coming before Black Friday. We'll mm. have an announcement video about it in a week or so, and um, it's a cool thing. There's a lot of stuff in it. It will be. It, it's. 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 Uh, uh, okay. So Brian has said as much, but if there's, if you know about the store and you know about the stuff that we do around this time of year, there's a thing that we do around this time of year that we release. And there will also be one of those this year. 
uh, there is a lot Vague. of stuff in it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, a uh, it's challenging. It is a challenging item, and inside is a a really like a lot of stuff. Uh, so hmm. there's your tease. Everybody. Get hyped. Get hyped. There's a thing with stuff. There's a thing and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's in the name. Yeah. Scam stuff. Scam stuff. That's scam right. Scam stuff. Uh, but the only thing it isn't Finally is making a scam. Go what? Uh, well, now that's just confusing. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like we don't really know how to name anything. It's almost like that. Don't get me started on bad fucking names. Okay. Anyway, so uh, (laughs) that's wait. Is the product called Night Attack? (laughs) (laughs) No, it's uh, the name for it is 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 good. Mm. It's a good name for it for what it is and the motif Mm. of it. So. That's, that's, Stay tuned th- for next month when we reveal that name. Well, <laughs> it will be out by then. That, that's a problem. World with exclusive. <laughs> End of next month. So that's the weird thing with doing the show once a month is that we can talk about stuff that's going to happen and then or talk about stuff that's already happened. Mm-hmm. But we're never close enough to anything to talk about it comfortably. Like I could tell you a bunch of shit about it, though. I think David would probably have a conniption <laughs> if I did. Um Ooh, I want to see right. Mad David. I don't um, think I've ever seen that before. I don't. I would angry, be afraid angry, of angry David. David. I not because I think of him as particularly like intimidating, yeah. but I think just because he's tall. Yeah, I think just tall, tall men are scary. You can take him, Bryce. Mm. I probably could. I'm scrappy. Yeah, kick I'd him fight, in the shins. I'd, I'd fight dirty. Yeah, yeah. Throw sand in his eyes. I feel like David's kind of like me in that he would be like a quiet angry. Yeah. I feel like he would he would really simmer. Like he does he Just doesn't judge you. He doesn't attack, but he's got some he's got stuff prepared if you want to start some shit. Right. And if you want to start, he can he can do this. It's thing. a real real Pandora's box. Yeah, right. I think he's like, just got every weapon that is sold on the store. No, I mean psychological. Like no, okay. I mean he's got like blackmail ready to go. Okay. <laughs> just barbs. Yeah. And actual okay. barbs. Uh huh. That's the how my tire. Shiv. You know, I, I you know I did piss him off last week, and I, I lost my tire popped earlier. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Black Friday. Um, I don't know that there will be much of a discount on this thing. By the way, buy buy from us on Black Friday, or else mm-hmm. David's yeah. coming for you. Oh, he's come to your house. <laughs> Please do buy some stuff at Black Friday. My understanding <laughs> is that we would really like to make some money on Black Friday. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna take about a five minute break here on the live stream. Um, uh, we'll be back with uh, some more uh, the bizarre briefing after this, though. All right, hit him with the theme song. Ba da ba boo da 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 do da da ooh the briefing ooh da 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 do 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 uh uh do 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 do. All right, we are back with the story thing so we have a, a few more topics here actually uh, quite a few so let's shift gears to scam school jeff yes in uh, this this was not the situation last month was it but you nope. are now fully working on scam school remix uh you or that you are taking over that whole show mm-hmm. uh how's that going because you've been at it for a minute now uh at least a month maybe a little bit more um it's good uh yeah, I'm still I'm still getting used to filming it, which might be why the intros look a little different. Uh, but I know that you know I think the first week that I had taken over was when y'all were in were at Scoops. Oh, out in Vegas, and, and so y'all it was like... shot some some openings uh, for me. Uh-huh. But I I don't have a whole hell of a lot of camera experience, so I've been kind of like learning as I go with that. But you know, mm. um, it's it. Scam School Remix is something that's a lot easier for me to do because it only takes a few hours and I can kind of do it just once a week on a Sunday night. Uh, uh-huh. This last one was a little, that one was a little weird because that particular episode in the beginning, I don't, in, Andrew Main, is that the? Yeah, on the right, know? that's Andrew yeah. Main. Uh, his audio for some reason in the first segment was like bad, gone almost uh. it seems like. Um, and I wasn't sure whether to go in and try to bump it up, but because I only have access to the old footage the old, it like, would have final been mix. cranking the music way the heck up yeah. so when was this so this was 2011 so they were still kind of playing by year a little bit yeah um mm-hmm. that doesn't surprise me 
um, that. But it's interesting because it's not good audio. That one's so early, but then the other two that I did the two weeks before that were the dice balance challenge with uh, Diamond Jim and then uh, vanishing a, a coin. And those were both like, I feel like later episodes. Yeah. I mean, this uh, is in the Moon Tower. So this is at least in Austin. Yeah. Um, so those were both pretty easy. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. I've been liking it. It gives me an excuse to come out here and, you know, record a little bit with Brian. And I like the remix is actually, I feel like a great, like when I started doing scam school, there was a lot to absorb all at once. And remix is like, just there's one thing to do in remix and it's right. like trim. That's mm-hmm. all you're doing is trimming all day, every day. There's no, there's a lot less creative choice. I feel. Yeah. yeah. I, I had that when we were doing the best ofs um, this month. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is um, you by by being so limited to basically whatever footage is on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, you really a have to get creative and b just call it on on some some ideas. Just say, well, this is not going to work like it like it is. Yeah. Uh, especially because some of those old episodes are so long for what they are, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I think as far as like filming it, you'll get more, like the only thing I would say about this is maybe the, it's probably a little overexposed yeah, and the balance doesn't quite look right. Yeah. But I think that's partly of it being overexposed. Um, and also like this, I don't know, like Brent, do you normally do the white, um, halo light? Because our normal setup, like we have it here is set to purple. Yeah, but I it's can, set to white when you just turn everything on, but don't hit the. I can never yeah. remember. Um, I, I felt like Brian put it on a different setting every single time, so I I, I didn't even know you could change it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I feel like it, it was purple more often than not on Remix, yeah. but it was I, I just kind of rolled with it. Yeah. Uh, that GH four does overexpose a little easy, so you kind of have to like push it a little more underexposed than you normally would feel comfortable with yeah. i feel but it also has better range than the gh2s yeah i think one of our gh2s is not set to zero to 255 or something also for some reason when i filmed this like i really busted out the color correction on that one because it was orange like brian was just the orangest man i've ever seen yeah that's uh, very possible this is uh if, if the white balance is like you can set this room is usually about 3,500, maybe a little under just because there's so many warm lights in here. It's kind of impossible to like get a nice color grade out of this spot. Okay. Um, It's not perfect. There are too many different light sources. Yeah. uh, And it's like a lot of times you're either going to get like a very blue image or a very orange image um, depending on which side you, you land on. Uh, I, I did end up on on uh, a LUT that I ended up liking that was kind of kind of subtle but gave nice contrast. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do kind of have to get it in a specific place in camera for that LUT to work appropriately. Hmm. And I think it um, it it takes a little bit of time. Like when we were doing the weekly stuff in here with the the, the giveaways and the buying the scams, like I. Uh, it, it, it's a little finicky and definitely this room is not the perfect calibration, but you know, you, you can make it work. You can get close enough. In a know. pinch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so speaking of scam school, I mentioned this earlier. We did uh, for most of the month um, scam school best ofs. Uh, mm. So we went back and made basically compilation videos um, except for the first week of the month but we we did four compilation videos uh one on matchstick puzzles uh one on openers one on uh closers and one that uh compiled all of the footage that they shot years ago for of brian's stage show Hmm. so basically it's like an hour and 10 minutes of his whole stage show plus a bunch of stuff he hasn't done uh, in a long time like the bed of nails or um, the the time machine toaster oven, which I don't even know if that was part of his full stage show set necessarily. Um, but those were an interesting exercise because on one hand, I was able to like rely pretty well on 
uh, in most cases, scam school remixes that had already been done. Hmm. And by taking those edits and kind of going into the project files and clearing out the graphics and stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that helped out a lot in, in terms of just compiling these really easily. Um, but then there were a few episodes that just had not had remixes done of them um, or or they were more recent episodes of ours where they were still like full length for today's standards, um, but needed just like a no music clean pass or I would edit a remix version down in the project file. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, I don't know, that was an interesting exercise to do. Um, I hope that these videos have a really good long tail on them just because uh, they're, they're all longer than they normally, than they need to be. Like the match six one is the shortest at like under 10 minutes, but like, the openers and closers are about a half hour and then that stage show is over an hour um so if someone is interested in them then that'll be a lot of watch time but maybe not necessarily out of views mm. um but like compilations and stuff should do well in the long term on youtube right like so much of scam school is like an evergreen channel um that you know in the past compilations have done really well like when we did the six best of things six like easy things for uh, now you see me too like mm -hmm. that did really well partially just because it was like six tricks but also that was not a comp that was a compilation but it was not previous footage it was all new right. footage how did that one that was the that we filmed at kung fu that was like the gauntlet oh uh, that the set that you had it there was the seven killer closures with him and david yeah uh it that's did, at, you know, did okay. that did, that's doing really well that's at like sixty thousand, which is more than you know, an episode that is only a couple months old, right, is doing, you know, now. Um, okay. But yeah, so I, I, um, I hope that they do well. Um, we, uh, I, I, so I don't know how much to talk about this. Um, we did those best ofs, and uh. The scan, the, we're looking at like new things that we can do on the Scam School channel and look at ways of doing even more stuff on that channel because if the channel is more alive and there are more varied types of videos on there, it should stand a reason that that it can do it, you know, a, it can raise all ships and and be a more active channel. Um, and so that requires us doing some things internally and doing some things with our partners over at group nine slash discovery and um uh so probably by the time the next episode of the bizarre briefing comes out the scam school channel may be a little different or a little funky um as we set up and prepare and and get things ready to try a new thing out um we're getting further i'm getting further away from teasing and i'm just describing mm -hmm. it exactly you're so vague this week guys. <laughs> between black friday and the scam school channel things, things in places i know um and i it, it's really tough because i have i am every day having a stronger and stronger vision of what that thing looks like and mm -hmm. the ways that we can do all of these things and the physical things that we have to do and the filming things that we have to do and the way to try to make it so that we can shoot more often with less people, you know, when more whenever we want. Um, but until a piece of paper gets signed, I, I like just for myself and like trying to keep my, like my expectations and excitement in check. I mean, I'm always like that. Right. But um uh it's there's some new stuff happening and if someone is is looking at this in history if someone is going back and listening to this episode you probably know what it is by now so probably probably right um on a completely different topic oh, um uh, real quick oh sure uh as we we're scrolling through thumbnails I remember that Jeff uh did the scam school remix for an ep the only scam school that I was in for, oh. for not ad reasons uh where, yeah where the, i had my super oh, long hair yes yes the vanishing a coin no no no, no. it's the fusterda matches like a dovahkiin uh, i i know because i just sent brant a all caps and said bring back floppy haired brant uh go back to it's like right <laughs> in the, the beginning, beginning before he goes to the cut 
it's like right in the very beginning. No, 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 no. A little bit further. It's right before the basically past these two, and then there's kind of a whole compilation of him trying to get other people to there do. Oh yeah. So yeah, Corey's in there. There's. there's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the only time you've ever been on a. A scam school? Outside of ads. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And voiceover. I've been in voiceover a couple times, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, so I'm, I'm teasing a thing on a completely unrelated note. This has nothing to do with the last thing that we just said. All right. Completely. Segway. Uh, we have a new Discord server uh, called Scam Nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have been promoting mm-hmm. it on the Scam School Best Ofs um, the past few weeks to kind of get people to you know uh join in but it is a public server uh kind of trying to um house the scam school youtube um community um to kind of get them a just more um involved and connected on the sorts of things that we do Mm -hmm. um and secondarily it is attracting a lot of people who are really fans of modern rogue and aren't in the patreon (laughs) server (laughs) Huh. Uh, which I think was just inevitable. I think the 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 Venn diagram of that makes that um, uh, uh, inevitable. But it's been up for a couple of weeks now, and uh, we have some good folks in there. Like it's 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 pretty good, you know. Uh, I, I mean, uh, 161 people online, hmm. and uh, uh, probably more offline. But I can't seem to grab the little scroll bar because it's one of these tiny Web 2.0 pieces of shit. Um, but yeah, like a, a pretty good, almost 500 people offline. So like, and it's not too busy, you know, people get into a discord server and then they never use it or whatever, but, mm-hmm. um, it is, it's, 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 it's going well, I think, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of new faces, a lot of new people who I've, I've not seen. And I, we haven't put the word out at all on any of the other channels about it. Right. Um, I think for me, just to kind of see what overlap there is, if any, and I think I've only seen like one or two names that I've seen from other servers, um, but um, I actually kind of like it not being like another communal thing for everyone in all of our communities to also join. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, like I didn't even put up the word much on Slack. Like I told Brian that we made it because... Um, I think I wanted it to go up with the first scam school best of and then it did in like the comments. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's its own little thing and it's only got a few channels, uh, which is nice because I don't know, I'm in the diamond club server and there every time I it, like, there aren't more channels, but there are a lot of channels mm. and it feels like there are a lot just cause I see them all. Hmm. Um, in any case, uh, Scam Nation. That's uh, you'll find the link on the latest Scam School videos. Sounds like a Brian title. It is, and it's a bad name, <laughs> and it's a bad name you're going to hear a lot. <laughs> so that's uh, um, that's where we're at. As we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, name and stuff. Mm-hmm. Not our forte. It turns out the bizarre well, briefing. Good name. Good name. <laughs> Good name. Good name. Good name. <laughs> Though I will say they're both two words that are a little tough to spell. True. You know, how many Not Z's, a perfect name. How many R's. But yeah. You know, but a good name. It's a good name. It's a good name. <laughs> so <laughs> Dylan, yeah, Dylan in the chat room says I'm not a big fan of the name. Well, I know. But also it is the the name that has been settled on. <laughs> Maybe yeah. a contest for a name. Well, we can't leave it up to people, though. Yeah. Scam, One, scam face. Don't, like, don't ask the community. Don't ask the people to the community. Don't ask the community. Two, we've we've done things where we're like, oh, the community will name this thing. Uh, and then that, like, we did it with the Masa Miata that we were like, this is totally going to be on the modern rogue a whole bunch. Right. Let's, let's. I don't know where that fucking car is. I've never seen that car. <laughs> I've not seen that car since we shot that episode. No idea. And uh, and also, they never chose a name. No. Oh. They were like, everybody leave your comments for the name of this car. It's going to be a big thing. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. Absolutely not. I don't think that 
they gave like I know they let us use that car. No, I think we gave that car to the stunt ranch because we burnt it out or something, and they could use it. <laughs> and I don't think we really had a place to keep it either. Where so. would we? Yeah. Um, so I think the only time we've ever had a community run naming thing that worked out okay was Dave, Dave, the rubber mannequin guy, right? Uh, and that was like a patron's can name it and then there was like a poll like that was a concerted effort to can to, to take names for that right more or less yeah. and then we kind of because a, a lot of it is just like hey patrons this is a lens we're doing a thing right. give us a name and it's like well and then no one does or maybe one or two people put jokey things and then they don't even check yeah as far as so it's like well you know it's it's the it's Brian's like comment and subscribe. It it's really is. is. It's not like I don't care. I don't need your whole life story. Just hit a button for me. It's just like and, him saying engagement, what? engagement. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But if you want something named right, do it yourself. Right. Okay. Is what I'll say. All right. <laughs> Goodness gracious. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a scam nation discord. Um, lastly, uh, last, uh, over the past three weeks, uh, we had more conventions. I think I, I must've talked oh. about this last episode, but yeah, probably we, we went out to Las Vegas for scoop fest and then we were in San Jose for TwitchCon. Mm -hmm. Uh, both of those th those were really good times uh, uh twitchcon was nice because it was nice and short and not um uh it, it, it didn't overstay its welcome mm -hmm. right we we left we, we got there on friday we left on sunday and that was it and then we came back uh and the water ban was was undone oh, yeah. a couple oh, right. hours later so that was a whole thing yeah um and uh scoop fest was a lot of fun scoop fest was maybe a day too long i think we were out there for like four days or something is a little too long for me, uh, but was a lot of uh, it, but was was really good. The <laughs> the thing about both of those conventions was that they both had video production teams on site in some capacity. It's like mm. Twitch was streaming all of their theaters out to they had set up a bunch of Twitch channels. So we were on the PJ Sugar Theater live channel, whatever. And then for for Scoop Fest. Uh, they uh, they had like a whole thing yeah they they because uh, they were shooting it in this new studio where they are recording um the the hay scoops show from from now on and so uh i guess they're tight with the guy who owns um who owns the studio but they had this whole like wireless video system where like they had guys on iPhones with gimbals. They had iPads mounted up all over the place. They had someone doing live switching to stream it out to their Twitch stuff. And um, hmm. it it looked pretty nice. It looked it certainly looked better than the two camera setup I was going to do there. Uh, and so we for both of those, we're, we're running the TwitchCon panel for this week's episode of Night Attack. Um, we're just going to run with their video. Um, I, uh, I got the audio for both of them. Uh, the TwitchCon or the, the ScoopFest audio was, was already great because Jacob, uh, they have their own like on, on set producer doing audio mixing. Hmm. So it, it sounded fantastic. And then the TwitchCon stuff was, was good enough that, you know, it just needed to be compressed a little bit because right. the levels were, were a little wonky, but you know, both of those were trips that I, especially for scoop fest over over packed for like for scoop fest i took the whole camera bag and mm -hmm. a whole setup and we did record some other stuff out there but like i i brought way more stuff than i needed to right and then when twitchcon came around I, what i was told was that they stream stuff where they were going to stream everything so i was like well then i'm not even going to take a camera like i'll take the zoom so i get a feed right out of the board which was nice but yeah it was it was it was pretty nice to mm. to 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 have all that stuff be handled um because a lot of times it's not yeah um but that's cool yeah it was pretty nice um i don't think what we have any more conventions coming up for the rest of the year <laughs> it's been a it's been a run it yeah it's just like put the beginning of summer it's just been constant conventions every I mean, month yeah. or two like 
I'm not even going to him, and I feel exhausted. <laughs> Well, because Brian goes out of Brian is out of town for a lot of stuff. He, it wasn't always conventions, but Brian went out of town a lot. Also, yeah, he he's he's mentioned before that he went out to L.A. multiple times to like pitch TV show ideas and stuff. And he had like an Australia thing at some point, right? Oh, right, he did a, a he was a speaker at a security conference in Australia. Yeah. So, so he was I, out there for like a week. He had the Hawaii cruise with his the family oh, right. cruise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, hold on, we can we can name more stuff here. Oh, you guys went like, to LA for the for the shoot for the, the Monterey shoot. shoot. Mono Rogue. Uh, that was all of us. That one I did go on. You did yep. go to that one. Um, uh, 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 oh, there was another thing. There was a whole like other thing. Uh, man, I don't remember. Defcon, Defcon, a uh, Defcon mm. also happened. This is like a uh, family trip slideshow that we're uh, <laughs> showing to all the viewers. <laughs> Just like, like a scrapbook. Here's, the here's us next to Mount Rushmore. <laughs> there was a convention there. <laughs> there was, there was, there was, there's been a lot of travel. So Open Buyer is asking me, uh, what was my impression of TwitchCon? TwitchCon was, was fun. So here's a fun thing about uh, Brian. So Jeff, you don't know this because you've never traveled with Brian. Yes. Um, so Brian will leave pretty much anything that he can to the last minute to the last minute right like mm-hmm. he don't he won't he won't book hotels ahead of time because there's always availability uh he won't book rental cars because there will usually be availability uh but when you go to conventions the thing that you should do is register for the convention <laughs> and so okay we detailed this on on night attack last week night um the two and a half hour um gauntlet of of Brian realizing that he did not order any tickets for TwitchCon. Um, and also TwitchCon had sold out for the first time of badges ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like eight different people that we talked to who had to be coerced into just giving us badges so that we could go and do the panel that we were speaking on. Um Wait, there wasn't like a contact with Twitch to give you badges since you were on a panel? Well, were you expected to be on the panel and also buy your way in to be on the panel? No, so you you, you get a free badge if you're a speaker, right? right? But the email that Brian got was not, here's your confirmation number. Uh-huh. It was, here's your coupon code. Please go buy your badges for free. Oh. And he only saw the email and said, I've got badges. I... I, I don't know. I have a uh, it, this is this is a no brainer to anybody who doesn't actually watch this show or is watching it for the first time. Yeah. Like I have to schedule every week for Rage Select. Uh. And that's like a that's a job just taking care of stuff like buying tickets. And and I mean, there's a reason that people have people to do that. Mm-hmm. And it can be really overwhelming when you're just doing it all by yourself. But, yeah. But also, <laughs> I mean, for a man who spends a significant <laughs> amount of his of his week just answering emails yeah you think he would open it and see oh i have to do this like i'm just i i just look i'm real sympathetic at it i just look side eye i'm real sympathetic to the to the the whole like oh i'm gonna do that in five minutes and then like it's thursday and you forgot all about that but i guess so in any case, I think Brian just wanted an excuse to use that clip from our Taco Bell episode of Modern Rogue where Jason <laughs> looks at the camera and he goes, you just got hacked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we we ended up walking away with two badges and they were sold out. So you there did you just get hacked. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> he does you just went again. to the nearest nearest bar to TwitchCon and start pulling out some scam school mm. magic tricks, betting them for for their badges yeah well uh so uh otherwise twitchcon was nice we met a bunch of people uh and we met a lot of new people and so we're gonna try to see if we can have them on night attack uh in the next couple of uh couple of weeks couple of months uh we already have a few people lined up which is nice um so that's... kevin smith finally <laughs> finally kevin smith uh no it's a lot of it's a lot of twitch i mean we went and networked with with twitch partners and twitch people so uh uh it, it was nice meeting other people who are both kind of in talk showy space and who are, you know, definitely not because it's Twitch and nobody is. Um, so that was fun. And then, okay, here's my, here's my TwitchCon story. So TwitchCon has had an expo floor, right? Most okay. conventions do, you know, the, 
new games and products and contests. So there were there were booths for kind of everything, kind of a lot of weird stuff like local real estate conglomerates were like, hey, uh, if you ref if you if you if you sign up to live in one of our apartments, we'll give you free money and stuff like that. <laughs> OK, there are also weird big name booths like uh, Nishin Cup Noodles were there and they were giving out cup noodles. And their booth was just these neon noodles. It was like a photo op. So you could just get your photo taken in front of some neon noodles. Or like a guess. Guess watches were there. And it was just like, you want to buy some watches? <laughs> Here are some arcade cabinets and they don't work. <laughs> so I mean, people at TwitchCon, maybe they got appointments. Maybe they got places to be at a certain time. Maybe they're the perfect demo for watches. I just like, is that the, the slogan for guest watches? Do you want to buy some watches? want to buy some watches? <laughs> I guess. Yes. Um, but uh, we, uh, uh, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was me and Brian and Justin Robert Young and Mike TV. Uh, we were kind of walking the expo floor to say that they could walk the expo floor. And uh, every time we would stop somewhere, Brian would stop and like give unsolicited business consultations to everybody. And uh, it was like, oh, you All know, what right. you should do? you should you should have a premium plan and let people sign up and, and make the, and skin it their whole way. And then they don't even know it's your, it's powered by your thing. And you got to get a better name for the thing. Your thing name your name sucks. And this whole thing. <laughs> it's called and Night the, Attack. <laughs> <laughs> and. The one of the places that we stopped and did that was Gamer Goo. Do you know Gamer Goo? No, <laughs> no, that sounds gross. I, I don't know that I want to know. I don't, what it, he is right that the name is bad, though. <laughs> the name is, I like, uh, no one wanted to say it to the inventor's face, but Gamer Goo is a bad name. Is it like Game Grub or whatever? No, so I thought it was like that too. I thought it was like Something a nutrient eat, paste like slurry balls energy drink. Uh, no, it is a lotion that you put on your hands. S what that dries out your hands, it doesn't moisturize, it dries them out so that you have the proper fucking texture on your fingers to, to gain. That sounds horrible. Victory. I, I've never had that problem. <laughs> like the controller just slips I, out of your well, hand because they're so sweaty. I know some people do have sweaty hands. I, when, yeah, I've had like sweaty hands and I, I w can tell like, oh, it's weird to use my phone right now. But I've never thought, oh, I need to buy a product to fix this. Gamer is, isn't goo. That, isn't that what like the chalk is for when people like go yes. rock climbing? Yes. Well, and, and I think the people who make gamer goo have other brands that... Uh, because uh, there there are places where you can't use chalk and so they have like liquid chalk and it's it's pretty oh. much the same thing hmm. um so there are i think they have side brands that do stuff like that weird um but they had samples so they had these samples of gamer goo and oh, they're no. in these little packets oh, no. um i think I, I i i just saw something on here so maybe i can i can show you apply to hands you better <laughs> believe it <laughs> <laughs> what are all these boobs there, doing oh on there's gamer a lot of boobs website. on this website huh hey, i mean <laughs> So they had these sample, these sample packs. They Ooh. they look like little like condiments, they right? Like Taco Bell hot sauce packets. <laughs> so here's the thing, right? Did you get your goo fix? So I they were, <laughs> we, they were talking to the guys and they were doing their business consultation. And I was like, oh, I've never tried this thing. Whatever. Got to get your goo. So I got it. I pick up one of these packets of goo and I open it. I rip it and grip uh -huh. it. And which and which like, flavor? I rip was and tear. The orange. It was the orange okay. flavor. Mm -hmm. And so uh, later, so I'm applying it. I'm slipping it on to my hands. And it's a so lot. So to speak. <laughs> I'm putting it on and it's a lot and it's wet. And I'm just like, this is a lot. This feels like a lot maybe. And so a few minutes later, the guy who they're talking to gives them a, a squirt. He pulls out a little sample bottle and he's giving everybody. So he puts activating out a little, agent? It's, it's, well, he just gives them a little squirt, like a little pea, pea sized drop. Um, Meanwhile, I've put on this whole packet, like an ounce of gamer goo on my hands. It's a lot uh -huh. of goo. It's a lot of goo, bro. <laughs> and so they're talking to this guy so long that it's drying on my hands. But there's so much on my hands that there's this it's awful. It's crystallizing. There's a white residue on my uh -huh. hands. <laughs> That's and great. I'm like, bro, what is this? And I, I'm trying to be nice because they're trying to be nice to this guy. That's the goo guarantee. <laughs> but like I was... A, my hands were so fucking dry. <laughs> they were way too dry. Hey, it works. It it was okay, I will say 
You're not going to drop a controller now. Using my phone <laughs> and the touchscreen stuff was... Never been better. It yeah. was ideal. Yeah. It was the perfect balance. Just texting so fast. But uh-huh. the residue was way too much. They, they get, I, I ended up with so much, and so I had a bad impression of it. Mm. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't buy any. Like they these bottles that they have on this website, this will last you a lifetime. You have to use so little of it. In any case. So you're not gonna buy the thirty one ninety five gamer goo triple pack? No, I don't think that I will. No? Best value. Though they do have cinnamon on sale for oh, wait, some do reason. They have t-shirts as well? I want a gamer goo t shirt. It just says gamer goo it on it. <laughs> you're gonna think you're on some porno channel. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's how you make money with video on the internet. Uh. Yeah. So I and and also this was this was like an hour before our panel. And so I was I we were still on the expo floor and I was just like my hands have a lot of residue. I'd love to wipe it off or anything, but I didn't want to separate from the guys. You didn't want said, to re-moisturize your hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to separate from the guys because if they're cut to the wind, then they'll uh, they'll be lost for the whole day. Uh, so I ended up having to get a cup of water from like a um, they had these buckets set up and just like be dipping my fingers in and like cleaning them very gently. Um so I didn't have to like wait in line to go to the bathroom or something. Anyway, gamer goo. Gamer goo. They, they should sell like an inverse <laughs> gamer goo. Gamer Just gone. A game, gamer oog, and then you get the oog on your hands, and it gamer re- oog. You, you re-moisturize <laughs> yeah. your hands. Okay. Uh, it, yeah. It's a reversing agent. That yeah. Just, uh, if they touch, they called... both disappear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's antimatter and matter. Uh huh. <laughs> So that was TwitchCon. Um, and then scoop- on the back of the shirt, it'll say Oog, and it's like a right. mirror version. Yeah. So that way you're representing both products. Yep, yep. So it, it's so you if someone is in the going. mirror, yeah, yeah. If they see you in the car mirror, they right. know, oh, that guy likes Gamer Goo. Yeah. Or maybe it's like reversible. Right. <laughs> so you take, on each off, side. you take off the That's shirt. That's really good. Go inside out. That's really good. So then every day you have to ask yourself, do I feel <laughs> goo or oog? I mean, you know. Yeah. I feel goo. You <laughs> doing goo? <laughs> I'm goo. Oh, I'm goo. Oh, I'm goo. <laughs> oh, that's so we goo. We goo. We goo. We goo. Oh my god! And then, um, uh, uh, Scoop Fest was Scoop Fest was fun. We drank the whole time, and oh. then um, uh, uh, they did the show. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know how. No, I... no hand drying story. What a roller coaster <laughs> of a convention. <laughs> No, we didn't have any like gamer goo level stories from oh, from okay. Scoop Fest. Okay. Uh, uh, we did we did spend so we did spend like ten hours in the bar of the TGI Fridays because they were there early because they wanted to drink and eat, and then the the Oregon's Ducks game came on and they're like, "Well, we, you, I we know you want to watch this, so we'll watch it with you," uh, and then we just kind of hung out for a little while. So, um. That was Scoop Fest. Scoop Fest was a lot Ten hours at a TGI Fridays. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. What's well, atta- it was attached to the casino in the hotel. Mm, still. Still. Yeah. yeah. Look, man. Hey. <laughs> it, there's is it's like a weird thing where like you've been there for so long, but the wait staff doesn't want to keep checking on you because. <laughs> so it's like Sydney, <laughs> another white Russian. You basically have to do that. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think we have any conventions coming up, though. I do still need to apply us for Pack South in the new year and then we need to figure out what we'll do for south by southwest because presumably by that time in february or march the the studio space would be such that we could accommodate a live event but it's i have no idea that's future bryce's problem it's a lot of assumptions that's yes (laughs) so um keep Keep your ears peeled for that uh, on convention talk. Hmm. So uh, we are in the last stretch here of the uh, show where we talk about all sorts of off topic um, stuff. Brant. Yeah. Last was it last episode that we spent a lot of time talking about TNG. Hell yeah. Uh, So you've also finished. So you were watching Next Generation and you finished it last month. Mm -hmm. And so this month you've also finished Deep Space Nine. It's true. How was that? It was better or worse job. than TNG. Oh, worse, but it was good. Okay. Um, it was a lot of like, like TNG was like very much 
you know, hey, let's let's explore. Let's like talk about like first contact with this species and like it's very like isolated incidents across the universe and stuff. And Deep Space Nine is, you know, it's a it's a hub. Mm -hmm. So you get you get a lot of people coming to the hub. But also Deep Space Nine is really about the war. Mm -hmm. So it's like a war series and it's all about the the you know the two sides the diplomatic tensions and stuff yeah. um there is a little bit of that in tng mostly towards the end um but it's really in tng that's just the backdrop for the story that's being told um but deep space nine does some interesting things yeah um yeah here and how there. deep is the space really moderately deep but okay. i feel like they don't mm -hmm. go deep enough not deep enough mm -hmm. yeah uh, there was it's not deep space 10 it, true you know you know starfleet's always like i don't know cisco you're pretty far out there but then when <laughs> cisco's like hey we got we got a real problem here they're like all right well like here's all of our ships it's fine yeah, yeah right like um and there's there's really interesting stuff because Captain Cisco, the 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 main the, the main captain man, um, he he becomes like a religious icon. Oh, he's so good in in Deep Space Nine, he's which so is good. kind of like an interesting thing of like him being this kind of person who is trapped between being, you know, a religious icon for this whole planet full of people, but also being a Starfleet officer who has regulations and protocol and that whole side of things. Yeah. Um, some of the villain stuff is like starts kind of interesting or starts a little cartoonish, gets interesting and mm -hmm. then goes back to cartoonish a little bit. Yeah. Um, which is a bummer. Ducat is really interesting in the middle. And yeah. that he kind of peters out. He just Be kind of becomes a mustache twirling Satan towards the end of the show. Yeah, <laughs> like they do kind of interesting things where there's like um there's there's uh, an outpost where like the these Cardassians who look like lizard people or whatever mm -hmm. um they occupy Bajor which is a place of normal humans but have funny noses okay um sure. and so it's like a military occupation and you know they're like you know running camps like labor force camps and stuff yeah um and then you know when the show starts it's basically once that occupation has been pushed off mm. like the bajorans have risen up um and reclaimed their their territory um and Ducat is one of like the military generals who is at that that place, and uh, they do some interesting things where they they give him the wiggle room to say like, yes, they're holding him accountable for the the horrible atrocities that were committed under his command, um, but you also see how he saw the things that he was doing as far less evil than what his superiors were trying to get him to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he wanted he wanted the Bajorans to like e embrace him and accept him because he's like, you don't know how much worse this could have been without me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's like... That I, sounds like a good foundation for an evil or a bad guy. Yeah, like like the, the, best, the best villains are villains that kind of make sense a little bit. Yeah. That you can the kind of like go like oh i i see how you got to where you are so yeah. um they just put out season two of the netflix castlevania series and <laughs> what i love what i love about season one is that it starts off with an episode totally dedicated to dracula and why he is out to destroy human race the human race and guess what he makes a really good argument for it mm -hmm. and so season two the end of season two is a, a, a bummer because they set up a bunch of new villains who don't have nearly anywhere near the same amount of like viewer empathy as the scorned dracula so it's it's hmm. also the last episode of season two is bad but i, I think that season two of that, that it it spends so much time being like you feel sorry for dracula right and it's like no man like i did except that this is a series made by that eddie shankar guy who loves to see like uh -huh. people's skulls getting stepped on and like women and children getting like thrown into fires and stuff like that so uh -huh. i just don't have a lot of sympathy for dracula he, like. <laughs> dracula is is just kind of absent this whole the whole second season which yep. is a shame because he's the best and he just gets walked over yeah he gets walked over by a bunch of dumb idiot assholes mm -hmm. 
Oh my god, <laughs> frustrating. But it, you should anyway. watch Castlevania on Netflix. Hmm. Uh, but yes, it's the same similar thing where you have right. a villain that you kind of think has a point, right? And you hope, like a lot of times, that gets um, diverted into, well, oh, we're going to team up to fight the real bad guy mm-hmm. who caused both of our problems. And now we're on the same side, which I guess is also a little thing that they do with Alucard in Dracula yep. or in, in Castlevania. In See, I think that, I mean, personally, Deep Space Nine is one of the more enduring Star Trek series for me because it's the only one that consistently talks about how non-Federation people work in the future. Is that like mm. all the other shows, the focus is very much through the lens of the Federation. Whereas right. you don't just get like the Klingons, but you get, I mean, you're getting a face full of the Bajorans and the Cardassians and then eventually the Romulans and, you know, the Klingons as well as the founders. And I mean, there's just so many, some of the best Ferengi episodes that I've seen in a Star Trek show and the whole kind of, I don't know, I, it, it doesn't start very well, but I feel like the middle just is so diverse. Like you can never the, tell week to week what you're gonna get. Man, that the series premiere of Deep Space Nine, I really <laughs> didn't want to watch Deep Space Nine after that. I was like, oh my god, this is like not what I want. Well, the, the first thing that happens is that the captain basically his wife was killed when picard was a borg and he kind of takes a big dump on captain picard like <laughs> so yeah. that series begins with like oh you like picard well and, and i don't like also picard. it's like yeah. this big long protracted like a battle sequence where it's just like oh we're in this ship and explosions are happening everywhere yeah. we're all gonna die oh no and then it's just like cisco is like i'm really bummed out and everything sucks and i guess i'm on this like empty spaceship and and i i hate starfleet and i want to quit and this and i'm real upset yeah and it was just like it was a real bummer um but yeah like they do really great stuff with ferengi stuff like uh, i really love the the turn that nog and rom made where it was like oh these are unconventional ferengi and we can see the sort of ferengi culture through them um and in how they are breaking boundaries um, and I thought that was cool. There's there's a really great episode where Captain Cisco uh, is in a newspaper uh, uh, mm-hmm. room. That's that's a very very cool episode where it's like it gets kind of meta, and you're like, I don't really know. It, like it makes you kind of question the what the actual nature of what characters are experiencing is Mm -hmm. Mm. um and it made me realize that most of my favorite episodes in either of these series is ones with unreliable narrators and like uh not knowing if your perspective is is valid or not Mm. because it's like with tng one of my favorite episodes was the was the flute episode and that's an episode where you're like it it's really pushing you to say like what's real and what's not yeah um uh you might like i just finished watching homecoming on amazon prime Ooh. the new I like the podcast so it's based off the podcast yeah um it's directed by sam esmail and it's written by the people who wrote the podcast mm. but it my understanding is it diverges from the podcast so it gets a little uh becomes a different thing um and it deals with some similar themes as well hmm. And also, it's a very quick watch. Oh, like, okay. It's ten half-hour episodes, but it's it's it's. Uh, I just want to gush about Homecoming for a second. It's gorgeous, like completely, like all of the smart, cool, like glamour of the cinematography of Mr. Robot is like tripled in this Mm -hmm. in like they built these huge multi-level sets and so they can do these these crazy like shot let me pull up the trailer because there's one of um um where they have these spiral staircases Mm -hmm. and I, i i don't know how they do it but they get it just right where you you can follow you follow someone up the stairs through the middle of it um uh but it's it's um it, it's almost like all oh here we go it's like all machine um uh, uh camera movements except for a, a handful of handheld things hmm. but it's 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 all of these camera vehicle shots where 
they're they're stabilized in such a way that it real it looks like a video game it looks like they're the camera is mounted to the car but like 20 feet away but mm. it definitely is not it's either mm. a drone or like a very maybe they painted out a harness or something but like incredible like gorgeous cinematography hmm. um and it also kind of you can tell in the trailer but it kind of goes back and forth between widescreen and one by one uh aspect ratios weird for because there's some timeline stuff going hmm. on um it seemed weird to me because the it's... podcast was like what Catherine keener and david schwimmer right it's a new cast and then they and then they went back and cast julia roberts yeah julia roberts where i'm like it just seemed a little strange because you already had like not just a voice actress but a full on actress. Big name. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I I think I think Sam Esmail was like, well, we're adapting it and we don't want to be tied to this other thing because they they was talking about making changes to the story as well. Hmm. And it's like, well, if we're gonna re adapt it, let's not try to be tied to the other thing. I think at least that's how they was justifying it. Okay. But Julia Roberts is great in it. I've not heard the Homecoming podcast. People say the other the other woman is better, but Julia Roberts and Bobby Cannaval are fucking fantastic in it. It's really interesting to hear David Schwimmer because his character, I don't know how it is in there, but his character in the podcast. Kind of like a macho guy. He's such an asshole. Yeah. He's like the world's biggest asshole. And he's just always yelling at people. Mm -hmm. And But but also can, Bobby Cannavale, that's, part, that's him. Right. It's just, yeah. it's very weird to hear, I guess I haven't seen david schwimmer in a decade so right like, <laughs> oh yeah because yeah that would be huh yeah yeah um any other uh halloween do you guys uh oh well hold on, hold on uh you're working on a bot brant you're learning linux uh, very lightly i always um, see you in our like hidden test channel mm -hmm. like typing out stuff yeah i uh i i i, I made that is it okay if i show people um it, will it fuck stuff up if they know what like these commands are? I don't think so. Okay. Well, uh, maybe I won't. Okay. Yeah, m maybe not, because I'm not sure which which permissions are for what. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's funny. I made that channel, and I was I, I initially made like a separate role, so that way I would be like, okay, just me and the bot, and then I forgot that oh, crew roles are admins, so they have they see unfettered everything access anyway. to everything, and yeah. I was like, that's fine. <laughs> um, and uh, well, you're using it to like make announcement embeds, basically. Yeah. Like you, so you can't show that. Well, no, but we can show what they. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with like gifts and like information and stuff. How, but I don't see any triggers in the announcements channel. So is that right. something you do bot side um, or in the test channel? No. The, so that's something that I input a command into the announcements channel and then it sees the command. Uh, deletes my comment and then sends the embed. Ah, I see. Um, so yeah, uh, we've we've got a bot on on the Modern Rogue Discord, and I mostly wanted it to set up a um a, a scheduled clear for one of the channels. One of the channels is set up in such a way that it's you know supposed to be totally cleared out every night mm -hmm. um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but that's kind of hard to do. A lot of bots don't really do that. Um, very well um yeah well because um in in other channels that i've seen that do it they use it there's not an easy built-in solution for discord so they will do mm -hmm. um uh they will have it just where no one can read the message history but then no conversation can happen because stuff literally can't exist if you're not looking at it or logged in at the time mm -hmm. um so this this clears it or this is meant to clear it out at a at a regular interval yeah um and it has some functionality for it um and so we use the bastion bot um and it has a handful of things that it can do but unfortunately the the way that it handles schedule commands is that it's like uh, i'll put in a schedule and then it'll generate a response and it needs to see that generated response in order to operate on that schedule. Mm. Um, and if you're using a clear command, it's going to clear out that generated response. Ah. Um, so there there are some... And the clear command does have arguments that you can use that say, hey, don't clear out these kinds of messages, like pinned messages. Mm. Um, but currently the schedule command 
doesn't allow arguments on whatever command you schedule presumably because there's probably a structure where it's like schedule command is the command and then whatever you're telling it to schedule is the argument to that command okay um so it's probably just not built up to have like a three parameter command yeah um but i i brought it up as a feature request and it sounds like it's going to be implemented in the next version oh nice um so it will be functional in the way that i intend it to um, but one of the big obstacles that I had was I was running it locally hmm. just on my personal computer, but anytime my computer goes to sleep or turns off or whatever, then the bot isn't there, uh, mm -hmm. which is not ideal for anybody who wants to actually use the bot for any of its other features or functions. Yeah. Um, and so I looked into hosting it. So. Google Cloud, there's like a Google Cloud platform that I think is designed for people who want to do like mobile apps mm -hmm. and want to have a server to communicate to through that. Right. Um, and they're like, okay, we'll give you, we'll give you, you know, a free year and $300 worth of credits. And then if you happen to use more than $300 worth of credits, then we'll ask you if you want to continue it and pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise enjoy just do, go buck wild yeah um so i got a little like mini server um which is under their standard server and so i think you know it the way that the bot operates is it's basically just like a, a script for command prompt okay um so it's like super low resources um takes like 100 megabytes 150 megabytes uh, so not not a lot of uh m storage size or anything um so like super minimal server uh which should last me like two years if if those credits hold on long enough yeah um huh. before i have to pay anything and then it would be like four or five bucks per month or something that's not bad yeah um so it's been uh, and that's run off of linux i think i, I could run it off of you know whatever whatever uh operating system i wanted but linux was the default and i was like i've heard of linux um, <laughs> well when you've done some command line stuff with um ffmpeg a little bit so it's yeah. not i mean it's not the same thing at all but it's a command line based system yeah there there's a command line interface and my dad worked in it so i kind of like have been around linux systems before hmm. I know that it's a penguin. Yeah, that's right. He's the mascot. That's uh his his name is uh Eunice, the the Linux penguin. Sure. That's right. Uh, -huh. uh he's got it. He loves the North In Pole. One. Nailed it. Uh yeah. Um and so I was like, well, how hard could it be? Um so I started that up and then it's actually it, it's pretty cool. It's it's like a text-based adventure game where you're like, okay, I know that if I do PWD that's gonna that's gonna like show me where in the directory I am right <laughs> yeah and then I go like okay I'm gonna do LS and that's gonna tell me all of the paths I could go and then I'm like okay there's a bastion path to the north so I'm gonna type <laughs> CD bastion and then it says you went to Bastion up north. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. LS, let me look around and see what's around me. And then it says, okay, you have these files around you. What do you do? And I'm like, okay, let me open this file. Oh my God. And then uh, let me change these parameters. It really is like that. And it's kind of fun. It's a little... <laughs> It's weird because it's like there's no direction um, yeah. if, if you don't like already have an idea of what you're going for. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 a fun little thing. And I got the bot running. Yeah. Um, That's pretty nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, it says here. Uh, I I can't read this. Are you able to read this? Uh, this I like Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, now I don't know if you if that's exactly Red what Dead Redemption Two is the shizzy. That's okay. what that's what I said. Yes. That was what was written. The shizzy is in quotes as the it should shizzy. be when a forty year old man says it. Okay. Uh, I like it. I I I think it's very good game. I think it's a good game. Yeah. And I think you should play it. Uh, I do think it requires a lot of like upfront investment. 
I've heard that the beginning tutorialized stuff is long and does not have good auto saving. Uh, people, I would say it's a lot. Like the more, first hour or two. I would say like the first four to eight hours. Oh wow! Well, the thing is that they they're spooling out. They're really it's really bad about telling you how to do stuff. Okay. Like I didn't realize until Saturday when I was like fifteen hours in that if you put a waypoint and start driving your horse and then you hold down the button to go into cinematic camera that you can the then drive. put down your controller and your horse will just run along that line like i don't know that the game really ever explicitly tells you that right. and i feel like it tells you things once and mm -hmm. then it's just like if you didn't Rockstar get it games are a lot like that especially yeah. with their like tooltip based instructions for everything yeah um, um it everything that i've seen about it makes it seem very hardcore in a way that i would not like like caring for your gun and and caring you for your camp that. and you have to do that either. or you know horse stuff and i don't know uh, you don't have to do that either <laughs> <laughs> i mean like you really don't have to do very much of any of that stuff i but think you it's could all pet there. dogs you can pet a dog you don't have to do that but you can pet a dog okay it's really sure. like you can do any of this stuff or you could just ride from checkpoint to checkpoint and do the mission structure okay the way that it was you know you could calm your horse oh i can calm it too yeah you just be like hey there buddy Ooh. Yep. Okay. my horse is is it's like uh, a good horse calm yeah you can put on hats mm -hmm. you can put on it hats. does seem like there are a lot of outfit options there are i i was thinking the other day that i really wish that they had a thing where you could like move your hat like up or uh, like down no, no. or tilt it or like, whatever like brian's hat adjustment thing that he does sometimes mm. yeah like, because I, I kind of wish that when I wanted to be evil, like you could, you know, pull your hat pull down and all, like, uh, oh, yeah. Western style. But that'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. Or, I, like, cut holes in the top of the hat and then pull the brim all the way down so that way you can see <laughs> the other. But from a profile, you look really intimidating. Or that, yeah. I guess. <laughs> that would yeah. be pretty cool. I, and then they aren't kidding. I haven't been screwing around that much, and I'm 20, 25 hours in, and I just hit 50.1% on my save completion that's a lot for a rockstar game 50 percent mm -hmm. i think it's going to end up being the 40 hours that people said it was which for a third it. person action driving around a horse game that's a big game yeah a big game but, yeah. yeah uh i i uh western stuff is not like my jam so i haven't seen a, a lot of the coverage about it but mm -hmm. i i'm hearing it all from osmosis or i'm seeing clips of it uh, and it looks like a very good game that people who like those games will like. Yes. So I think that is an accurate. Yes. <laughs> if you like cowboy games, you should probably play Red Dead Redemption. 2. It sounds like the epitome of a cowboy game. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's I mean, it's a, it's a little less root and tootin' and a little bit more like taking itself super seriously. Mm -hmm. I, I've been saying that it's a lot more unforgiven where the first one was like the quick and the dead uh, uh -huh. where it was just like cowboy adventure. But um, have how do this i know that the online game is not up yet mm -hmm. um how do the systems of red dead like is is it clear what the red dead online is going to be is it just going to be the gta online of red dead or is it you have, an, an I idea? have no idea I, if i had to take a guess i'd say that it's probably going to be the gta the gta online of red dead and that they'll probably do the same style of like updates with adding in more content and more missions and stuff um but. my only thinking is because like uh red dead i i guess the way the gta online solved a lot of the like single player hurdle hurdles from uh just gta 5 is by making you be a new person mm -hmm. having it take place before the story yeah uh and writing a lot of nonsense that means nothing and and they just have a reason to give you missions and stuff yeah so i guess i can see that but i think i look at like red dead and the world of it looks so much larger than GTA five and like it has a camp structure. So I don't know if they are instead trying to do more like a, like a fallout 76 sort of thing where it's going to be like co-op story or go the other way and just focus on fighting and, ma and battles and stuff. I but, could see it. I could see it go. I don't think, I don't think it'll be, I get the impression from playing the Fallout 76 beta that Fallout 76's primary motivator is survival. So having enough to eat, having enough to drink, having enough for whatever, that is not a problem in Red Dead. Like I've never run out of tonics or food or any of that BS. Mm -hmm. um, 
so I don't get the feeling that it's going to have that survival aspect to it. But I don't know. I mean, it might be fun just to get a bunch of people together and ride uh, out and blast on a town. And, <laughs> and Open Bay says that they leaked that they're doing a Battle Royale online multiplayer. But okay. GTA Five has an online Battle Royale. It's just not called Battle Royale. It's like... It's got some dumb name and nobody ever plays it because it's not very good. And so you only get three people playing at a time. Mm-hmm. But it's still a Battle Royale game. So it's it, it's weird. And I mean, I guess you can try it, but... I mean, with the horses, it might be interesting. I mean, you get a well, squad of people with horses to kind of well, run through. With, with GTA, but... they just spawned you in random locations and you stole cars and found guns on the ground. So I don't see why they couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I like it. Hmm. There you go. I think it's good. Um, I uh, so we started. I started. We started the episode mentioning that we started late. We started late because I popped a tire on the way on driving right out of the headquarters, like right at that gate on on the side entrance. And I thought I hit something. Mm. I thought I hit something or bumped into something. And well, if it's the side entrance, there's there's like a weird like bar of metal there is like a ground. post out there but i don't think i was near it enough for that to have been it also my my car has been running shaky the past few weeks and it was the sort of thing where the past few weeks i've been like well you know i just had it in the shop and i didn't tell them about the shaky thing it could just be any number of things uh i know the last time my car was shaky it was because a, a tire was about to pop but it's not as bad as it it was really bad the last time hmm. um but this was not as bad. I got plenty of time. I can go have it set to have them look at it later this week when we don't have shoots and stuff. Um, and then when the tire popped, I was like, of course it was. I don't know why I talked myself out of thinking it was that very obvious thing. Um, so I'm riding on a spare now and I don't think I'll be able to get it looked at. Maybe I can get it looked at while I'm working Wednesday, but probably not. I don't know because I don't know if we're going to be shooting stuff on Wednesday or not. Uh, so it's a bummer. Yeah, rough stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so cars, how do they work? Cars are such a pain in the ass, and ugh. <laughs> they told me I had a leak, and it was going to cost a thousand dollars. I was like, no. So yeah. I might not have brakes in the next couple of months. Yeah. So hey, I'm not a car car guy, but you need you need to be able to stop, right? They work. You could do a lot of like power sliding, a lot of Tokyo drifting. Just <laughs> my, understand, yeah. my understanding. My understanding. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, was, it, it is a it's a donut. It's not a full size bear. It's a, it's on a donut. Oh, um, that'll make the breaking the power sliding even more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to get them to tell me that it, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a from what I understand it's a leak in the brake master cylinder, and they wanted to replace the cylinder, and it would cost a thousand dollars to do everything to replace it and refill it and flush it and all. Um, uh, but he would not tell me how bad it was. I was like, like, can you ballpark it? And he wouldn't tell me. So, so next week we're going to do a know. modern rogue episode <laughs> where Brian and Jason <laughs> fix Bryce's car. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know the I, I, the power braking is still fine. I figure the power braking will probably get harder <laughs> the closer it is to failing. This brings up a really interesting hypothetical question. Okay. If Brian and Jason wanted to fix your car on the modern Rogue, would you let them? And would you Hell feel no. comfortable driving it afterwards? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Uh, I, I, Aspis is trying to tell me that the donut only has a life of 100 miles. Yeah, that'll be fine. That's. Yeah. That'll be fine. Um. Mm-hmm. That car is not that old. It's a 2013. Mm. I mean, it, it was it was used. I think Stop it was street racing, like, man! I keep telling you, <laughs> I, I don't drive a lot. Bryce loves like, his He's like, oh, Tokyo like... drift is about Tokyo. I gotta start <laughs> drifting. <laughs> this is life a quarter mile at a time, right? But it's like I'm never life is a highway. <laughs> I gotta ride it all night long, so. I, I'm not in stop and go traffic very often. Mm-hmm. I'm never during rush hour. Right. Is highway driving. Mm-hmm. It only takes one. One what? <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you really soft rubber tires? Like high grip tires? I don't know. They came with the car. Okay. So. Were those like the original tires from the car? 
may maybe. I mean, it's 2013, so that's not crazy. I mean, my car is 2012, and I had my tires replaced recently, but the, and they were the original tires, so yeah. it's probably not like out of the realm of. I think they were and life for those tires. Yeah, it's just it's another expense I don't want to have to deal with. It's getting new tires because if that one's gone bad, then the at least one of the other ones is close to being just as bad probably yeah um which would not be good because i only have one donut um so also here's the thing okay so they they have a okay last thing this is my last thing they have a chamber in the trunk for the spare mm -hmm. for on on my car one in the chamber but it's not um the the spare is significantly thinner than the the regular car tire. Yes. Yeah. So when you put the car tire back in into that, it, in it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in there. It doesn't fit. It's like an inch or two too tall. And so the right. little cover is lifting up. Yes. It's because you're not supposed to like just, this is a problem that is solved tomorrow, <laughs> not like over an extended period well, of time. I, 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 uh, <laughs> they make it really inconvenient. So you go, oh, right. I've got to deal with this. Right. I By will. the way, I, I once will. drove on a donut for six months. Good uh, God. That I was think, really interesting. I think Brian is... Don't tell Bryce that. <laughs> <laughs> no, last time it happened, I got it fixed the I next day or so. like 19 and really stupid and irresponsible. So. Well, I'm, I'm 28 and I'm poor, so I don't know if that's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, so Brian, uh, Brian uh, pulled up for unrelated reasons and helped me... Uh, replace the tire before the roadside assistance came uh and he uh offhandedly mentioned that he is either still running on his full-size spare or his full-size spare popped <laughs> it's kind of important to know one, one of those two yeah one so of those. okay just tire tires man tire to tires tire to tires you know what i'm not tired of what's that is this show yeah well i'm tired of recording it we're going up two hours now but <laughs> i i love listening to it which is why uh my favorite website on the internet is bizarrebriefing.com where you can find all the old episodes show notes time codes uh and of course if you'd like to watch the video version of this you can find it at youtube.com slash scam stuff we record this show around the end of the month uh, and uh, we, get, we get together and talk for a couple hours about all the good stuff that's been going on. So if you like it, please subscribe, um, uh, though you probably already are uh, in the podcatcher of your choice. Uh, plugs, very briefly. Jeff? Rage Select. Rage Select .com on YouTube. Find it. Just all search for it. Stuff. Yeah, you'll find it. Brant Hughes. My hair's natural. Every month. There we go. We got it. <laughs> David's not here. We got it. Somebody's got to do it. You got to do the thing. You got to oh. do the pull thing. Ah. Uh, uh, Twitter.com slash Gatabag, G A T O W A G, uh, Twitch and uh, Instagram. Instagram, All also Gatabag. Modern Rogue Show. That's right. There you go. Check it out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Brad Cas, B R Y C A S, and I do most of the streaming on twitch.tv slash night attack which is where this show uh is uh i already got all the show plugs out of the way so with that i'm gonna say uh thank you guys for listening and have a good month yeah bye bye diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program <laughs>